Okay, so in this problem, we are going to work with this network. This network has one, two, three, four vertices and four edges. We see that it's a rectangle, so we can assume that the opposite sides are going to be equal. And if we were to find the minimum spanning tree, which is the first part of this problem, we would take the two shortest edges, the 12 and the 12, And then we would take one of the long edges to connect them. So this would give us a network that looks like this. This would be considered a minimum spanning tree. We see that all four of the vertices are connected in this network. And the weight of this minimum spanning tree would be the sum of its sides. But now we want to find the Steiner points and the Steiner network and see if this Steiner network is uh, a minimum network, if it's less than the minimum spanning tree network. So we're going to use GeoGebra to do that. Um, to model this mathematically, it's good practice to let the lower left corner be our origin. So we're going to plot that as 0, 0. If we move horizontally from here to the other corner, the lower right-hand corner, that's moving to the right on the x-axis. That would give me the ordered pair 12, 0. If I start from the origin and go straight up 25, that would make the top left corner have these coordinates, 0, 25. And when we go to the last corner, that's 12 over 25 up. And these are the four points that we're going to put into our worksheet in GeoGebra so we can find the Steiner network. So in GeoGebra, we go to the input bar, parentheses, 0 comma 0, that will plot our point. We see point A there can shift this. I know that I'm going to need to get 12 across and 25 up. So if I scroll on the blank space like you would on a browser, it'll zoom in and out. And that gets me to see 25 up here. So now I know I have enough room to plot my other points. So 0, 25, and then 12, 25, and then 12, 0. So these are the points of our network. I no longer need the axes to be visible. So if you click on the background and then click the graphics options, we can turn off the axes here. And we have our drawing space. And now I want to connect this back to my rectangle. So I'm going to choose the polygon tool. And I'm going to connect these A, B, C, D. And then I have to go back to A to close the figure. And we see GeoGebra's measured all of these, uh, side A is 25, side B is 12, side C is 25, side D is 12. That's just like our rectangle. And now we want to construct our Steiner point. So I'm going to drag this down. We're going to create our equilateral triangle on top of this edge. We use the circle tool. I'm going to click point B first, then point C. We did this with a compass tool. We made an arc in class where we Put the point of the compass at B and the pencil part at C, and we draw this arc. And then we switched it. We said, well, let's put the point part at C and the pencil part at D and draw an arc this way. So I'm going to use the circle again. I'll press C first, then B. And where these two arcs meet, I'm going to put a point of intersection. And once I have that point of intersection, I'll click my arrow tool. And see here where it says conic, I'm going to turn off these two circles. I don't need them anymore. And I can connect this. I'm going to use the segment tool. So this little triangle underneath the boxes give, gives us all of the options available. I'm going to choose segment tool. Connect these. This now is an equilateral triangle. 
And then the next step for us, we're going to go to my drop down menu here and find the perpendicular bisector. I'm going to click on this edge and then on the other edge. These two edges I created, I used perpendicular bisectors to find their intersection. That is known as the circumcenter of the triangle. And we use this now to make our final circle. So we take the circle tool and click the center of the triangle and then one of the vertices of the triangle. We know we've done this correctly if the circle goes through all three points of the triangle, which it does. And the part of the arc that goes inside of our network is going to contain our Steiner point. We come back to this line segment tool. We choose the drop down and we want a line that goes on forever. So we're going to click E, then F, and the line extends, and where it touches that arc, we want to put our intersection point. And that's our Steiner point. So now we can say, let's hide all of this other stuff. Now, I don't need the circle. See how when my arrow highlights over the circle and makes it bold? It also makes the equation that corresponds to it bold. So I'm going to turn that off. And then this side is side G down here, and then side H. I don't need these lines. Even if I hover over the equation, you see the line becomes bold. I don't want those showing anymore. And I don't need points E or F anymore. And now I'm going to take my arrow tool, drag this up. So the Steiner point is our junction point. We want to put, uh, connect these two parts of the network to the Steiner point. So we're going to take segment. I'm going to change the color so it stands out. I'm going to make the line a little bit thicker so it stands out. And here's my points of my Steiner network. I'm going to take my arrow tool here. I just want to see my point name is G. I want to make a reflection of that to the other side. You could do the Steiner construction again. But since uh, rectangles have a line of symmetry through here, we could go back and use our perpendicular bisector. Click on the side of the rectangle. And now I'm going to use my reflect about a line. I'm going to reflect point G, so I click that first. Across the line I just made. And G prime, see a little tick mark? That means it's the transformation of point G. I don't need this line anymore, so I can hide it. And now I'm going to go back to my segment tool. I'm going to connect G to G prime. And then this is a Steiner point that connects to A and D. So this is the Steiner network. We want to check, is this going to be more efficient than our spanning tree, our minimum spanning tree? So I'm going to go back to GeoGebra, and I'm going to say measure these. So if I come up here where it says angle, well, I don't want to measure an angle. Instead, I want to measure a distance. I want to measure the distance from B to G, so I click on this edge. And I'm going to get my arrow tool so we can see this measurement. It says 6.93. And then I'm going to click my measure tool and click on this edge. And I'm going to move the measurement so I can see it. This edge is 6.93. And I'm going to measure this long edge in the middle here, that's 18.07. This edge down here is 6.93 and 6.93 again. So we want to add these all up now. So if I say um, Steiner network equals 6.93 plus 6.93, another 6.93, another 6.93, and 18.07, and I hit enter. It says that this Steiner network is 45.7. So we can come back here. So 
I said this was 45.7, and we can see that Forty-five point seven is less than forty-nine, and it's less by three point two. So the final question: How much shorter? So three point two short, or three point three short. I'm sorry. And that is the minimum spanning tree, the Steiner network through GeoGebra, all of the numbers we needed, and the final result.